Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 9 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode we will be implementing obstacles by laying down the foundation with creating a base obstacle C++ class and then creating a first obstacle blueprint, the small obstacle, and implementing its functionality of spawning it on each lane with a 50% chance of spawning. So let's get started then. So let's have a look at the obstacles that we have in the runner series. So let's go to meshes and we can see we have an obstacle big and an obstacle small. In this episode we will start with the small obstacle and for those two obstacles we need a base class called obstacle. So let's create this. This is going to be an actor. Let's create our actor class. Call it obstacle. Click on create class and once it's done I'll see you in the code editor. So the class was generated. Let's have a look at our obstacle class. It's an actor like you've seen before with the begin, play and a tick. And for the actor we need a scene component so that it gets a transform which acts as the root component and we need a static mesh component. So why not start implementing this now? So let's add a new property, make it visible anywhere, blueprint read only, and category equals components. You should be now familiar with this and how it's done. So let's forward declare it a use scene component, call it scene component. Let's copy this, forward declare use static mesh component. Call it static mesh. And we don't need the tick function, so we can delete this one here. Begin play, we may need, need the constructor. So let's go into the CPP file, delete that tick. And in here, let's delete this one and say scene component equals create default sub object. It's gonna be a U scene component. Give it a text of scene and say root component equals scene component. The same for the static mesh. Change this to use static mesh component. and set up the attachment. So static mesh dot setup attachment and call it scene component. Later we need another way to figure out if our character collides with the obstacle. So we are not using like a box component or something. We are actually using the collision from that static mesh and add basically a function to the on component hit event that the static mesh has. But before we do this, let's compile this and create our blueprint and set up the obstacle. So it's compiled. Let's go under blueprints, right click, blueprint class, and type in obstacle. Select the obstacle and call it BP obstacle underscore small. Save it, open it, and what we can do now is we see our static mesh. We select our static mesh, the obstacle small, and one thing that we need to do, it's rotated in the wrong direction, so we just rotate it by 90 degrees on the c-axis. Compile it, save it, so our small obstacle is set up. And basically, if let's say we add a plane just for testing purposes, scale it a little bit, and we can now track our obstacle in here. So that works. Let's delete this. And now we need to change the game mode. 
so that it can also add those floor tiles on one of those three lanes. And we'll do that next. So in our code, let's change one thing in the obstacle. We don't need the begin play, so we can delete that as well. And remove this here. And now go into our game mode base. Let's go into the H file. What we need to do now is when we create our initial floor tiles and call, especially call the add floor tile, we need to tell the tile that we create to spawn items. And then there's the possibility to say, okay, in the beginning, the first two, three tiles that we create, we don't want to spawn any items so that we don't actually spawn later on two big obstacles and you don't have a chance to move around quickly enough. So for that, we need to change the signature of our add floor tile, call it B spawn items. And this is gonna be a const. And let's go into our CPP file, paste this. And what we want to do is in here, if there's a tile, before we get the next attachment transform, we want to check if we spawn items. And for that, we would then, let's comment this out, we would call like spawn items. We need to create this function first in the floor tile. But what we can do now is, before we do this, in our create, create initial floor tiles, we say the first initial one is false. I guess we can comment this out. And in our for loop, we specify true, but let's add two floor tiles more with false so that we have our initial three tiles that don't spawn any items and items can be obstacles and coins later on. So we've got this, but now we need to add this. And also when we call the add floor tile from our floor tile, we need to specify true. So let's do this first in our floor tile, let's create the spawn items function. So in our public section, let's do it underneath here, make it, call it a U function make it blueprint callable in case someday you want to access it from blueprints and call it void spawn items. Implement this and place it, let's say a little bit tick. And you can see here's an error, what I mentioned that we need to specify true here for each consecutive floor tile that's been being spawned, it should spawn items. So, and as a cleanup, we don't need the tick function. So delete this and delete it down here. And there's another function that we need. It's called spawn lane item. So let us see what this spawn item function needs to do. It needs to spawn an obstacle, maybe a small, obstacle or a big obstacle. So what we need for that is we need the class that we can spawn and we need a function that we can call for each lane so that we say spawn item on the center lane, the left lane and the right lane so that we don't need to copy code. We create a function. Let's just do this. And this could be actually protected. And you will see in a second what I mean. So Let's just say it's a U function and we say void spawn lane item. And this item will have a U arrow component pointer to the specific lane. Because the code for each lane is the same. We will spawn obstacles and coins later on based on certain percentages. Right now, we are just to see that spawning the small obstacle works. We will just do a 50% 50, 50 chance of not spawning and spawning. So make it a little bit simpler. Now we have this function. Let's implement this. Move our spawn items below. So 
So what we would do is spawn lane item, center lane, spawn lane item, left lane. And let's just copy this faster and do it right lane. So for the spawning itself, like I mentioned, we need the class that we spawn. So as you've seen it before in earlier videos, what we need for that is a T subclass of our obstacle class. So we make it U property, make it edit anywhere, blueprint read only, category, let's say we call it config. And it's gonna be a T subclass of an A obstacle. And it looks like Rider has included it already again. So remove this and forward declare our A obstacle class here. So it's gonna be a T subclass of an A obstacle and we call it small obstacle class. So before we get into the meat of things, let's compile this and set up our obstacle first in blueprints. So in the editor, let's go into our floor tile, open it up. We can see now under config, we have our small obstacle class and we select the BP obstacle small. Compile it, save it, and now we can start implementing our obstacles. Okay, let's go back to code and see how we can implement this. So in our floor tile, what we need to do is, let's say, like I mentioned for this episode, for testing the spawning of our small obstacle, we say each line has a 50-50% chance to spawn a small obstacle or not. So for this, we need to call a random function that generates a random value between zero and one. So let's do this, const float rand val equals f math. So we use the f math library again, and it's called f rand range. And the range that we specify is from zero to one. And then basically what we are checking for is, and this is a ukismet math library function that we call in range float float. And if we go have a look inside, make this a bit bigger, then you can see it doesn't call any other fmath function also. So it's perfectly fine to use the ukismet math library call. And we don't want to type this. So this using this function is perfectly fine and helpful. So with this function, we check the value that was generated if it's between 0.5 and one. So everything between zero and 0.5, we don't need to check because we don't want to spawn any actors. So what we need spe specify is 0.5f and 1f. And we pass in two booleans for including the min and max values. And there's a comma that's missing. So our value will be checked between min and max and including those values. And if this is the case, then we need to spawn our actor. So for spawning our actors, we need to specify some spawn parameters. We need to spawn location. But one thing that I make, want to make sure of is before we call this function, we check if our class that we specified, if this is valid. So if you forget to set it in the blueprint and use it to spawn, you would get you would crash and, and get an error. So it's really important to always check your pointers and values and so on. So we check if small obstacle class is valid. And if it's valid, then we spawn items on our three lanes. And then in here, we can say, like I mentioned, we need some parameters. So they are called spawn parameters. We define it here. 
And there are some values that you can specify, like owner and other things. What we need to set is the spawn collision handling override and tell it to always spawn our actor, no matter what, basically. So usually when you have some collision issues and other stuff that would prevent the actor from spawning, you can set here that it should always spawn that actor. And then we need our location, or let's say that transform, the transform for, oh, but we call it location, whatever, and use the lane that we specify and get our component transform. And because the component transform returns a reference, we can set the reference here as well. So we don't copy a new transform, but it's a const. We don't change it. We can change it, but we have our location that we can now use to spawn our obstacle. And then in here we say obstacle, call it obstacle and get world. So we use the world to spawn actors. We specify a obstacle here. Give it our small obstacle class, our spawn location, and the spawn parameters. This is how you spawn actors into the scene. So later on, we will add new functionality for this. The more we get into menus and the real death function and so on. But for now, this should suffice. So we are actually creating our small obstacle first in a range of 50%. And before we go into the editor, there's one more thing that we forgot to uncomment, like tile spawn items. Of course, we need to call this to be able to spawn the items. Then let's compile compiled let's go to the editor hit play and you can see that it's spawning our our obstacles and we can jump over them move left and right right now the collision prevents us from running further but later on in the next episode we are going to implement a simple death function so I guess this is it now for this episode and we will implement the death function in the next one. So thank you for watching. I hope you really liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new episodes are coming out. This would really help me. So thanks again and see you in the next one.